about your journey on obtaining your current digital skill. Can you tell us about your journey on obtaining your current digital skill? Okay, thank you very much, Candy. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Michael, just as she has introduced. So uh, my journey in tech has been, a, how would I put it? It hasn't been a straight one. So mm -hmm. I studied computer science in the university. And while I was in school back in the day, you know, it was more of book, 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 and less of actual, uh, how would I put it, practice of the skills that was needed after school. So then I used to, you know, I was a web development enthusiast. And I loved to write HTML, CSS, do a bit of JavaScript and all that. So eventually uh, when I left school, I wanted to get very really serious with it. Then I started looking for resources that can teach me the uh, frameworks that are in vogue. I wanted to learn everything I could get my hands on. I wanted to learn uh, React JS, Vue JS, whatever I could you know get my hands on to just get going. So along the line, um, I started from uh, learning on YouTube. I'm guessing most of us started that way. Uh, most of the graduates today, you know, you go on YouTube, you pick a video, you pick a video, you try and follow through. You know, just get your hands dirty. Um, I used resources, uh, free resources like Free Code Camp at the time. So I got on there and I tried to do one or two, but I would, you know, I would get what I needed, but I couldn't see the bigger picture just learning on my own then. So I moved on from self-learning and all that, and I found myself at King Plus Technologies, where I was centered under the tutelage of uh, Mr. Lacon. And that was where I got my hands on Vue.js and got into web development to a very good extent. And after that, I proceeded from King Plus to my current job as a DevOps engineer at LVMHQ. So that has been my trajectory, my career trajectory. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing with us your experience, um, your journey so far. And I'll be calling on the next speaker with uh, Ajiboye Oyeyemi. Um, Hi. Hi, Oyeyemi. Good yeah, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, so good morning, everyone. My name is Oyeyemi Adido Insola Ajiboye. But yes, I love to go by my middle name, Adido Insola, but you could call me Doi for sure. So it's such an honor to be here this morning, and um, I'm so happy to be seeing your faces. Before I continue, I would love to say thank you to Kim Plus um, Technologies for the opportunity to be a part of the panel discussion. So um, I'm not sure I heard your question clearly. Maybe you could come again. Oh, sorry. Okay, I will repeat it. So can you tell us about your journey on obtaining your current digital skill? Oh, okay. All right, I am a software developer at FX Nigeria. I'm actually still an intern here. So um, the journey into tech started last year. And um, I, it's been a very interesting journey actually, because you know, coming from the background of agricultural economics, I actually did agricultural economics in the State University. So when I graduated, I got um, an internship opportunity in Akure, and that was how I started. So I was there for about six months before I left, and then I joined um, King Plus Technologies as an intern in mobile development. So that was how um, I started um, learning Flutter over there. And um, so I saw, an, um, I saw a post to actually apply for um, the position as an intern, um, FX Textiles in FX Nigeria. So I applied and then I got the job. There were a series of tests. I think I, I went through two, yeah, two different tests to get the job. And of course, here I am at FX Nigeria. So it's been it's just been um, a journey for my passion and my interest in software development. It's not been very easy because I do not have any prior knowledge of. Um, 
computer science or anything like that. But because I've always been interested in, you know, just trying out new things. And then I found out that I am keen on learning um, technology, like how things work, you know, when you use your mobile phone and you're just wondering how those things work. So that was actually what um, jet me up to actually put to um, push you my, um, my interest. And then here I am today. Um, that's quite something. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I hope the audience, um, you're getting fed already, like fed, not fed up, fed. <laughs> I hope you're getting what you want to get from this panel session. So we also have another speaker, and that's Ad Antonia Adedayo. Please, if you're in this session, can you signify? Uh, okay, I don't think he's around at the moment. Hello. Oh, thank you, I'm Anthony. Welcome. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. I'm happy to be here. Sorry, I can't share my screen now. Um, what's, what's the question? You want me to introduce myself, right? Oh, no, I already introduced you. So what okay. is your... Oh, sorry. Can you tell us about your journey on obtaining your current digital skill? Okay. So my journey started from... Um, back when I was in school, I studied computer science. And um, uh, although being a computer science student doesn't mean you necessarily have the skill. And um, what I did back then is to start um, asking questions uh, with some of, uh, from some of my um, seniors then in school when I was in under level. And what I did is start watching tutorials. Um, also find out that um, some of the skill I was learning, uh, self-learning, was being taught, but not in depth. So it actually helped me academically then when I was in school. Then after school, I um, did my NYC in a company here in Lagos, where um, I used Java. Before, before my NYC, I already started learning um, Java. And um, it actually helped me get secured up a large job then. Because even though NYC, they will tell you they don't do interviews, but that particular company actually did um, interview for me. And um, after then, um, I was able to like uh, develop and learn more skills from the company and help them build some of their products. And, and, and before then, I also want to mention that I also co-founded a, a tech community in school where I also, uh, with some of my colleagues, we train students, um, expose them to um some of the latest technologies and also help them beat out uh, beat some project from it so with that experience i had like leadership skills and also i was able to like develop my own personal skills too so after then i i applied for various other other, other various jobs um sterling bank joined sterling bank and um i was using um css javascript and frameworks like vgs and, and 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 java also after uh, after then i got an opportunity to apply for a job at microsoft also which uh, the interview process wasn't really the friendliest <laughs> but i thank god for the experience i already had in data structures and algorithms and um and um and and, and in web development also it helped me secure that um secure job at Microsoft. So, so that has been my journey so far, learning and um, also um, helping others grow. I And one thing I found out is that why, when you help others grow also, it kind of have a effect on you, impact on your own personal learning. So, so I think uh, that has been my um, tech journey so far. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing your experience with us and your journey with us. So I am also going to speak about my own journey, um, kind of play. And I was a designer back then as an intern at King Plus. I studied zoology in school and I studied at Exeter State University and I it to be high do. So after I left school, I was just like, ah, oh no. 
allow we don't finish like allow us as finished and i have to start looking for ways to make money so i got to the i i actually applied for k plus internship then but i wasn't granted the um scholarship so i was um assisting it, um one of the work one of the in one of the offices at the hub so if you've been to the hub you know there are several offices there so then i got to know about k plus and i was like oh i applied you guys didn't let me in and i was told oh because then i was still a student so i after i told them oh i'm done being a student and you know i'm still i'm just awaiting nyc and all the stuff so that was how i started my journey initially i started learning css html and developer stuff and when i got to javascript ah almost just at that point and i was like oh and then when i when i i love css so much because of the aesthetics you know you have to work with visuals a lot so i realized that i was hooked mostly on the visual aspect of it so i was just like and then you know this guy came to meet me and he was like just do you are your design like why are you stressing yourself you know all this stuff and then yeah that was how i was at first i was like what do you mean so you think i can't I can't still be a developer or what, but on the long run, I got to start my design journey. And yeah, that was how I started my design journey. And so far, Kim Plus, like, Kim Plus has just been, you know, the the author of my journey to, through this, to acquire my digital skills. So um, we are going to the second round of, quest, um, of the questions that the panelists will be answering. And I think some of us have answered this one, but I would like us to you know, answer it for clarity purpose. So tell us the course you studied in school and what motivated you to learn a digital skill. So we'll go with INA first. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Candy. So um, I studied computer science at Joseph I. Babalala University. And what motivated me was uh, one of my uncles then, because when I did jump and work, all that was in my head was to go for something environmental based because that's what my dad was into. Um, he was a town planner, so I was looking at my options in quantity surveying, estate management and the likes. But uh, one of my uncles that I really admired then was doing computer science and he was always with his system, you know. To me then as a young guy, it looked so cool. And I was like, mm, I don't really like environmental courses, you know. They go to, you know, bushes, examining lands, and I, I didn't get that. It wasn't something I really wanted to do. So I made, I did a bit of research into what I could do with computer science then as young as I was. Then I, you know, I was someone that loved to play games. Then I realized you can, you know, do game development, you can do graphics development, you can, you know, you, you have a wide range of options after school in companies where you can work. So that really sparked the interest and I decided to change my course from quantity surveying and I went for computer science. Oh, thank okay. you. Yeah, so was yeah. that your question? Yeah, that's that like what course did you study and what motivated you to acquire digital skill? So we're going to add it on you now. What course did you study in school and what motivated you to acquire digital skill? All right, thank you, Kimbe. Yeah, like I mentioned before, I studied agricultural economics, Nikiti State University, Adwikiti. And um ah, actually if i'm to talk about my journey i'm gonna be here for a while because <laughs> it's been actually a very exciting and um it's been an exciting journey and it's been a very transformative journey for me although i could try to come it's not like related to to technology like directly right but um it's been an integral part of my journey because it's helped me to learn all these digital skills it's helped me to like groom myself for the future because of course when you go to university you're not just there to learn your course particularly you're going to learn um how to interact with other people 
public speaking, a lot of things, right? So yes, I totally like virtual economics. Then after service, I think two days to my personal parade, that's POP, um, and I actually got a job. So the thing is, if you told me about it, there was a startup, there is a startup, right? And um, they were looking for young minds to employ, like as Java developers, but they were, they were so particular about people who did not have prior knowledge of it. But it was so particular about people who did not have prior knowledge, but it was looking for people that can actually think. And then they were sharp fit for the job, right? So um, I got it for the interview because the, the um, CEO is actually in Netherlands. But so it was, it was physically around in Nigeria then. So I went for the interview in Akure. And I was just so surprised. I was only asking me questions. It was just trying like, you know, hear from me, so to say. It wasn't asking me logical questions because at that point, I didn't even know anything about Java or software development at all. And it was just, you know, trying to ask me questions about myself. I was also running a business then about my business, all of that. And just told me, okay, I've got the job. I was like, ah, just like that. Oh, yes. Then he told me the perks, like everything I was going to get in. It was just too good to be true, you know, coming from a background where I didn't know anything about, you know, coding. I've never coded. I only know that, okay, I used to try my hands on graphic designs here okay. and there. Yes. Yeah. So eventually I got the job and then I started Java. I know most of us here already know Java and you know it's kind of hard. <laughs> not like, not like, hard for yeah. anybody to do actually, but yes, I had to do a lot of learning. I had to do a lot of, you know, coming down to trust that I could do it. At some point, I felt discouraged and all of that, but yes, I started and here I am. All right, thank you. We'll still have like room for it, for everyone to like, you know, you know connect but on a more personal level with our audience. So for now, like we're just talking about, um, because we studied and how it's motivated our digital skills, um, learning digital skills. So Anthony, over to you. So what causes the study in school and how did it motivate your learning a digital skill? Yeah, so um, for me, I studied computer science in school, like I said earlier. So, um, and one of the things that motivated, to be honest, I never wanted to study computer science. And, um, you know, like most students, you want to go for, uh, maybe you want to become a doctor or you want to become a civil engineer. For me, it was civil engineering. So, but for the school I um, applied for, then there was no civil engineering, and I thought about it that oh, I have at home. I have um, then when I was in secondary school, I have like a desktop at home where I play games, watch film, and um, I'm just do some little design. So in my head, I just feel I love working with the computers now. So if they don't have civil engineering, uh, why not just choose computer science? I wasn't really, um, let me say, convinced that it was going to be computer science because then computer science is just the notion most people have about computer science then was computer science is this. When when, when you study computer science, you, you either maybe be working at the cyber cafe or this. So I have no, I have very little knowledge about what computer science is. So I wasn't really convinced that it was going to be computer science but i just had to like fine let me just try it until i got to the university uh, find out from some of my senior um senior um, seniors then in school that oh yeah you can do this you can build this you can build that wow okay fine let me see maybe i'll be able to like build some one of the games that i've always wanted to <laughs> that, I've only, that i love playing so um so so then i got to understand that computer science can help you uh, help out uh, this world in in a, in a great way with very minimal resources right i'm a i'm a programmer i can build um software that can help our generation in great ways without having to like um um maybe have maybe big capital to start that, that particular business so i thought about it, wow this is a great way to impact my world i want to be one of the top um uh, top um persons in the world right that has impacted our world so that keep motivating me and um and yeah here we are now uh, thank you that's amazing and i on my part i studied zoology and environmental biology my intention was to further into the 
medical line after my school, um, after I graduated. Then ah, I said earlier, like, okay, anyhow, um, zoology wasn't a thing for me. Right from the onset, I love to be expressive and I felt like in the sales world, I would do well, like, you know, just telling people to come and buy stuff and, and all this stuff. And then studying zoology, I already like learned a bit of how the human works, like the psychology part of it and other stuff. But there had to be something more. I had to go like it just made me think, okay, um, the people advert like advert was what captivated um, captivated me the most. So I was like, okay, I've learned about human, although it's People think it's animal, but what I was taught in school was mostly like human related zoology. Then I was, um, it just geared me more into what I initially had in mind. And I was like, okay, I'm going to learn um, the digital part of this and be able to connect more with the world, be able to, you know, put my writing skills, my artistic skills, and, you know, all the other stuff into motion so that I can be um, effective in the advertising industry and the sales industry. So that was, that's how what I studied in first class like motivated me to study, um, to acquire a digital skill. So now we're going to the third question and um, how specifically has the digital skill assisted you in getting a decent job? Then like this is one of the most um, <laughs> important questions in this session, and I would like the audience to like pay rapt attention. And I'll come again. How specifically as the digital skill that you you have now assisted you in getting a decent job? So I think I'll change the sequence now. I would like Anthony to go first. So over to you, Anthony. Yeah. So um, so from the first question, I think I also mentioned some of um, um, the way that's actually helped my journey, but I'll also talk more on that. So um, having a digital skill has helped me in great ways, in many ways, right? And I think um, one one way to look at it is that you, if you want to, if you plan to impart the world, you need to learn. You need to even learn first before you think about any. And um, to me, um, you know, basically in Nigeria, you will, you will hear people say, hey, there's no job, there's no job, there's no job. Um, having a little skill in this current age is like, is like a great thing to have because you, you, not, you, are, not, you are not limiting yourself to, to your local environment. You can be in, it can be in the mo most remote part of this world and you're working with a firm in in the other part of the world, let's say US or UK or wherever you, you, you think of in the world. So to me, I feel that's one thing that has actually helped me because I, I, uh, the skill I've acquired, I'd make it easier for me to, to stand out among my peers, right? Not just, uh, uh, I'm talking about maybe other people that study other course, for example. It has actually helped me stand out uh, and, and also making sure that I'm not just, I'm not just, um, learning um um let's say jargons and i'm trying to like i i try to make sure that i structured my learning towards um, a popular market right so you know for example you you want to impart the world through web technologies or you want to impart the world through mobile mobile technologies you want to make sure that you spend a, a great deal of time in in mobile development or in web development, depending on which parts or which area you you have interest in so to me, I would say having um, um, a digital skill will help you um, accomplish most of your dream, be it uh, financial wise, be it. Uh, mm, OK, so. All right. Yeah. Yeah, you can you? Can you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. All hey, right. Did I? Did my head talk? So, so one, one, I wanted to add that it's very important that you don't just um, learn. You 
just channel your energy towards the part you have more interest in because that will actually keep you going. I think that's what has also helped me now. Okay, thank you so much, Anthony. Um, Ayane, can you, you know, let us in on, can she like say the question again? Yes, please, you can repeat the question. Okay, how specifically has the digital skill you acquired helped you in getting a decent job? Okay, so um, I'll just touch on a few points um, to start with. How, I, how and when I acquired the skills I acquired, what skills I had at certain level of my career path, and um, how each skill has led to me getting a better job at the at the next level. So, the first, to, to start with, um, I started with web development, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and I did a bit of um, WordPress and earlier on, you know, I I didn't have a job. I was applying, but you know, couldn't get a job. So I didn't want to sit idle. I started freelancing. So I did WordPress websites for uh, some colleagues. I got some. I got referrals from some of my friends to you know do some sites for their friends, and you know that got my hands dirty. I wasn't idle. It kept my mind sharp and. From there, I dived into frameworks, uh, JavaScript frameworks, and uh, that was around the time I was with Kim Plus Technologies. And while I was there, I could really see the bigger picture of how I can create solutions to people's problems using these tech stacks. So the, the points I would quickly like to touch on is, first of, as a tech, as a tech enthusiast that really wants to take this seriously, you have to uh, build your portfolio and invest in your personal brand. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities in tech, even though the industry has had the bit of recession over the last year or so. We can see the fangs, you know, having multiple layoffs upon layoffs. Even at that, there are still lots of opportunities in tech, a lot of jobs out there in different areas of tech, uh, be it uh, graphics design, UI, UX, web development, uh, uh, project, product management, you know, DevOps. There are lots of areas you can, you know, focus on in tech. You just have to find your path and, you know, keep at it. So, okay, so um, can I ask, like, um, yeah. The current job that you have, like how has acquiring a data skill helped you? In, yeah. So when I was doing web development, um, it was someone that noticed my growth during that period that recommended me to the CEO of the current company I'm working with. So the person just called me uh, one evening and I was like, oh, I noticed you've been, you know, you've been building stuff, you've been using uh, JavaScript and all this stuff. I'm, I, he said, I know, I'm aware that you are growing and you're actually working hard. So I have this opportunity for you. So there's another point I want us to take note of there is um, networking and connecting with people. So in, what, in whatever we do, it's always advisable to try and network and connect with other people within the tech ecosystem. Because even though your skills are paramount, uh, word of mouth and recommendation can go a long way in securing a good job for you. And what actually made this person aware of what I was doing was because he saw that I was growing, I was learning, I was actively learning. Like, uh, like my panelist said the other time, Anthony said, you have to learn before you can earn. So it was what I've done, the development skills I've had, web development skills that propelled the recommendation that got me this current job. And at this current job, everything I'm doing at the moment is um, DevOps related and data migration. So I, I want to advise that even when you are learning your tech stacks and these skills, skill acquisition is very good. All right. But don't let us underestimate problem solving. That's what people really okay. prioritize. Thank you. We still go to the part where you like, you know, 
tell us about all the stuff. So thank you. I don't know you can you tell us like how is acquiring a digital skill if you get a decent job. Uh, thank you so much. Kendall. So like Michael mentioned, right, it's very, very important for you to really know why you're doing what you're doing. Because it's going to get to a point where you might not feel like you fit in, but why you're doing what you're doing is going to be the question that you can always land on even when you don't feel like going ahead. So when this um, digital skill that I currently have, which is um, lot of mobile development using the um, Flutter framework. I didn't just come by it one day. I didn't just wake up and I got it right. It was like he mentioned referral, you know, doing what you know how to do best, just learning, joining platforms. And it's very, very important that we do not underestimate the importance of learning. Like you cannot just emphasize learning because the point where you feel like, oh, there is um, this opportunity that you have, like maybe there's um, a platform, maybe just a learning platform where you just join. You know how these um, open source programs, right? That you just join and sometimes those things look minute, they look little, but they actually go a long way. So what I'm actually trying to drive at uh, is that what I have, the skill I had, which is then was Java, right? Was the one who put, was was the one that opened this, um, the door of this job onto me. And Basically speaking, when you learn a skill, it's not like you can be very, it's not like it's 100% um, certain that you're going to get a job that will be related to that, to that skill that you have. But that's why it is important that you keep continuous learning, right? That's the point I'm trying to make. It's important to keep learning, even if it's not totally um, directly what you want, but whatever, whatever, um, whatever point you get to and you see, and um, an opportunity to learn anything. Just try to learn it here and there. So actually, when I learned Java, I, like I said, it wasn't easy at all. Like it was so new to me. I was having to like learn the nitty gritty of software engineering, not just development. And I'm coming from a background of economics, so it wasn't very easy. But the fact that I kept on, and then eventually with Java, I wasn't even. I didn't even know that I was going to learn Flutter. At some point, so when I got to Kim Plus Technology, that Mr. Lipman talked about oh clutter, and then I started, and and by the grace of God, I was able to get an internship in clutter development. So yeah, learning a digital skill is not what really matters, but you know, what are you trying to aim at? Like, what problem are you solving? Because if you do not identify a common problem, you do not identify your place in uh, in the what's it called now in the networking space, your place in the in the in, in that job in that um in that your space maybe in the tech space then you might not be able to fit in so identify what you really want to do whatever skill you want to you know learn then identify what problem you'll be solving with that before you know it so many doors will be open onto you for opportunities that would be relevant to what you're doing thank you all right thank you so much and i on my own part um not fully into the tech ecosystem but yeah, I work with a travel agency and when I got the job, like I got a job right after my NYC program, like even before I finished my NYC. And um, before, like I was just like, okay, I know the pace, you know, quite attractive. But when I got to the to the office and all that, and then I met my peers, they were way older than I am. And they were like, wow, lucky, <laughs> lucky you. And I felt like, um, when I got there, before I got there, it's in my portfolio or uh, my CV that I have, you know, design skills, tech skills and all that. And I felt like that was the reason why I was given advantage, like why I was taking in. And when I got there, I put my skills to use to like, they already have people doing the designs. But then I was just like, you know, this is something I like, let me just switch out. And then my boss just like took interest in me and you know it just made me like it's path there you know um the times are changing there was a time where if you want to get a job you need to have computer skills i don't mean the, like tech skills like learning java and all the likes but like just having computer skills where you can be able to type and use the computer efficiently but now we are in this we are in this age where 
everything is advancing and you also have to move with the times. So I think that was what assisted me in getting this job. I am not developing and I'm not a full-time designer there, but I designed for them. But I'm just saying it helped me, like it puts me like in a level that I could stand out from my peers that we applied together. So learning all these skills is not just, you know, like it's not oh, it's hard or anything. Like choose a niche. Like me, I like design. I like anything aesthetically pleasing. So it's something that is easy for me. So I won't just wake up one morning and say, yes, we have God has blessed me with. So I'm just going to build on that. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to you know, start all the coding, do no and nitty gritty of like it's just a very broad ecosystem. So you don't have to learn everything. Just you know, pick from there, pick from here, learn and whatever it is that you're learning to be sure. Like if you're learning design, know the best. Like be a good designer, and you can be you might not be the best, but be good. And um, also learn other skills to that um other sort um digital skills. Like you know, how to you know use several applications, design application, development application, meeting applications, you know data applications, so that when you apply to the companies that you want to, they will see you like somebody that is serious and is ready to move with change and time. So thank you. Um, the next question we have here is, um, how were you able to navigate your career journey? I think this is um some of us have touched a bit of this question but so just you know in a, like very briefly can you like how were you able to navigate your career journey you know what assisted you your soft skills your personal experience just you know let us know and i'm starting with ayeni yeah thank you so um yeah, I've touched on this a bit. So how I navigated my career. To start with, there is no definite roadmap that you can really confidently say, oh, this is how I want to go and I will get going this particular way. So it's just more of um, having faith, you know, working out and having faith. So whatever I'm doing now, where it takes me next, most times I, I can't say, Oh, definitely I knew I was going to be headed this way. But what I was doing at the time was what usually led to me getting that, getting to that next step. So um, when I was learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript, it gave me the foundational knowledge to progress to learn frameworks. And then the, the work I was doing with APIs and everything with frameworks was what someone observed and recommended me for my current opportunity. And at the current job I am right now, I do more of Python, scripting for automation, uh, more of IAAS infrastructure as code and all that. So navigating your tech, uh, your tech career, what I would just say is you should actively work on a path that you've picked. Oh, I'm a, I want to do web development. Okay, I'm currently writing VRGS. I will try and build stuff at the moment, pending why something you know, show up and believe me, as long as you're working hard and you're putting in the work, you will definitely progress. Exactly. So I did thank you so much, Ayani. I did doing can you tell us how you know you've been able to navigate your career journey? All right, thank you so much um, for that question. So navigating my career journey, um it's been a lot of ups and downs. I'm sure you already know that. But something stands out, right? And that is determination. Regardless of what you choose to do with your life, regardless of what you pick for your journey, right? What is the most important is determination. Like, just be determined that whatever orders you might face, whatever the assholes might be, you have to move forward. So for me, I am actually also engaged in continuous learning, like I mentioned that I started with Java and now I am currently a Flutter developer. So don't just, don't just hang in there and you know, just 
stop learning. You cannot even afford to stop learning. The tech world is always evolving and then there's always something to learn. And I'm very sure most of us know how Flutter is, right? Flutter is evolving, Flutter is, there's always a new thing out there for you to learn. So you just have to, you know, keep learning, be determined, and then always seize opportunities. That's another very important thing that I tells me in navigating this um, career journey. I am always out for opportunities because when I left my job, the first one I got, right, Java um, internship job, I actually felt really, I felt terrible because I didn't really leave on a good note. And I was just, you know, I wasn't sure if I was even going to get any other thing because it was an internship, like I mentioned, and it wasn't like I had done my Java certification or anything like that. So I was, I was kind of feeling down. I wasn't sure if I was going to continue. I was even thinking about, okay, maybe going back to my business because um, I'm, I'm a baker, right? So I had a side business and I was thinking maybe I should just go back full time to my business. But no, I actually just, just, you know, that determination is very important, like I mentioned. So I just determined it myself that, well, I'm, I'm able to do much more as well as then. I already did, and it doesn't even matter that I don't have a certification yet or anything. So I just started, you know, applying on LinkedIn. There's LinkedIn, there's GitHub, you know, all the platform you can think of. Indeed, just do everything you can. Just okay. do everything you can. Seize all the opportunities that you have. Thank you. Yeah. So we learn from you now that determination and you know, of course, consistency. They are all intertwined and discipline. Um, Anthony, please, can you tell us how you've been able to navigate your career path? Yeah, so um, for me, I started um, with CSS, JavaScript, and PHP back in school. So um, one of the things I got interested in, okay, fine, helping my immediate um, community in, back in school. So. I thought about um, building a product that can help um, student community, basically like a, a mini blog with some of my friends back in school. So what I did was to um, focus more on web because I had interest in web development because I feel it's easier for me to to reach more people through through web web development. So um, after then, I started um, telling people about um, the skill I have I told my mom, uh, mom, I know how to build websites in case we have friends that um, are interested in building a website for their business, I can help with that. So I started telling people um, do, and um, I started getting some small offers. Oh, help us build this website, we'll pay you this little amount. Then I, I started that way, then that that keep motivating me that, oh, if, um, if I have a skill, then people We'd be interested in at least paying for that particular skill. So um, after after on, I I start to notice that many people use some of these websites on mobile. So then I started um, getting interest in um, in building mobile applications. So then I started using Java. I started learning how to use Java to build uh, mobile applications, and um, that uh, that kind of helped me to even charge some of these customers more and say, oh, you know. I can help build a website, but in case you need a mobile application for your website, I can help with this. Then that's, you know, um, um, developing myself and also working for people in a way or rendering my service to people, keep motivating me that at some point I know I can stand on my own or I can work for a big firm and even earn more. So that keep um, encouraging me to keep um, uh, developing myself. And I also started giving back to, to the community, right? I co-founded a tech community with um, some of my friends that are also very good too. Then um, um, that keep motivating me, helping others, and also see how my skills has improved over time keeps motivating me. To me, I would say um, um, that is how um, um, I've navigated my tech journey to this current uh, uh, moment. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. And I think I'm the best. How have I been able to navigate my career path? I think one thing is um, helping people. Like, like I said, I am mostly like in another career that is 
entirely not tech um, ecosystem. So what I do is to like when I'm when we have tasks that involves design and all the rest, I am able to like I try to contribute at every point. So writing skill, just technical um digital skills per se. I try to contribute and that also helps me to keep learning because you know when i'm just the kind of nothing is impossible so when we have um a task for the team i'm able to like or oh, put my own um uh, contribute my own take to it and that's only because i have been involved like i have learned digital skills and i know what i can do so that also helps me to keep, keep learning and also so like um i freelance too and networking the power of networking can never be overemphasized you have to let people know that this is what you do so that will help you it will even keep you motivated because when some like when you're down and you don't want to do anything and somebody just comes to your dm and says oh somebody says you can do this can you help me with it? You really can't say no. You already put yourself out there, so you can't back out. So it is very important to, you know, put yourself in the limelight. And one thing I say, like, yeah, there is nothing impossible. So, you know, just keep keep at it. And with determination, resilience, diligence, and discipline, you would be able to succeed in your career path that you've chosen. So and we have the last question here. So what this is, I, I want the audience to pay rapt attention because like this is where we're wrapping it up and where we're going to give whatever it is that's left to you. So what advice do you have for anyone who wants to take the same career path as you? What mistakes should they avoid and what can they learn from your past experience? Okay, I'll come again. I think the question is a bit long. What advice do you have for someone that is just in the same career path as you? And what mistakes should they avoid? So I'll be starting with Anthony. Yeah, so for me, I'll say um, for what you're doing, right? Because I've, uh, like I mentioned, I've uh, also tried to like train people um, to have like data skills and I want, one thing I found out is that once they don't have passion for it, it's too difficult and they, they will just back out and you find out that they will be the ones to, you know, Nigeria say boss, boss, you are the boss, you are this, but they don't want to actually learn, they don't want to like spend that time. I remember when I started learning, there are times that I stay up to you about 3, 4 a.m. at midnight just because I want to solve a that problem. That was because I had like so much passion for it and I did not get discouraged. I remember back in school, um, I had a bug that took me about months, let me say months, to figure out what the problem is. I remember I, I had to like meet some of my senior uh, seni seniors then in school. So if you don't have um, passion for what you currently do, you it you will find it very difficult to kind of um, uh, progress. You will you will not be even motivated to like learn new things and learning every day, learning new things and um, finding ways to like motivate yourself is one key thing that you you will definitely need. And um, for me in the past, I think one mistake a lot of people also make is learning too many things. Like oh, you see your friend learning, um, um, let's say uh, a particular framework, let's say Angular. Or, or any any framework, you 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 are not done with what you are doing. You've not even perfected that particular skill. You also you you want to start be doing that thing. So you want to make sure that you you are focused. To me, what I did is um, I have a go for the year. I uh, maybe learn a particular language and I give my time a time frame to 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 learn some of let's say about six months to learn this. Or I want to make sure by the end of this year I want to be good at mobile development. So I start downloading resources to help me achieve that particular goal. So, so that was because I have like a vision, a plan for that for that particular year. So you want to make sure that you are focused, regardless of whatever distractions you have. Currently here at Microsoft, 
um, you no, but you will not be discriminated that oh, you use PHP or you use Java or you don't know this or you don't know that. The most important part is that you know how you know, you understand programming and you know how to code and you can defend your skill. So let's say you've been jumping from um, JavaScript to PHP to Java to to whatever, and you've not actually go in depth into studying some of these things, then it's going to it's going to be a problem when you you are asked some questions. So you want to make sure that you avoid distractions and you have a plan. Mm -hmm. I think that's what has helped me every year even till now. I always have a plan and a go for that year and things I'm interested in studying. So that was that was that for me. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Anthony. So um we have just a few minutes. So I would like for us to keep it very brief. Like just your advice can just be you know just one or two sentences and you know what mistake to avoid that's like the most important thing now so please like let's keep it very brief so that in the next two minutes we can round up thank you so ayeni over to you please thank you very much kendi i'll try to be as brief as i can so uh advice my advice to the graduates today is um first of all build a portfolio and invest in your personal brand for your portfolio you can make use of a platform like github because when companies want to recruit they might want to see what you've been working on the request for your github uh, page uh, you know utilize your social media twitter linkedin they, there are some jobs that when you apply they ask for the links of your profile your twitter profile linkedin profile they want to see the kind of connections you've been making they want to see the kind of content you've been engaging with you know they want to see all that and I, 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 along the line of your learning always try to document your progress these are the evidences you can show uh, interested recruiters that, oh, this is what I've been doing over the past six months, one year, so on and so forth. Uh, also, about being uh, intentional. I wish I was more intentional. That, that's something I would want people to avoid. I wish I was more intentional when I was learning. And how do we get intentional? You have to kind of ask yourself some certain questions. Like, OK, what can I contribute? Oh, OK pending okay i don't have a job right now what can i do okay can i contribute to an open source community mm -hmm. can i work on a project that i that has sparked my interest a few months back and you know put that on github okay that's the first question another question what have i achieved okay so i've embarked on a project for about six months i'm rounding it up now oh that's good i'm done with this project okay there are some courses i've wanted to take for a while now i'm done with them you know, be intentional. You have to be able to measure your growth and your career path. Now, who did I impact? You can, you can, you know, you, oh, you can impact a friend, a family member. Oh, I had a friend that had a bug with his code. I had a blocker with his code. I was able to resolve that for him. And lastly, who do I connect with? You can connect with your fellow software engineers. You can look up um, startup CEOs online, people you can reach out to that would really take interest in a newbie such as yourself. And finally, the mistakes to avoid, like Anthony said the other time, uh, you need to be streamlined and focused on the tools you want to use, the skills you want to acquire. When you're a JavaScript developer, OK, what framework do you want to get really good at? Oh, React. That's fine. You don't have to start saying I must use Angular View and all of that. So uh, thank you, Ian. Yeah. Thank you so much. And oh. I didn't know this. Can you, you know, tell us um, what advice do you have for anyone choosing the same career path as you, and what mistakes should they avoid? All right. Thanks so much, Kendi. I think um, we're wrapping up already. So I'll try to be as brief as possible. But um, like the question says, what advice I have for those who might want to tread on the same career path as me? Okay, so currently, like I said, I'm a mobile developer, Flutter developer. So I would advise you if you're planning to, you know, delve into um, software engineering and then the mobile aspect of it, you just can. <laughs> I can overemphasize that word. Like just be determined to face all those because it's not going to be very easy. We all know how tech is. You know what it takes, right? So it's not going to be very easy, but I can assure you that you can do it. The moment you oh. said you have to do anything, be very sure that you can do it, okay? So start 
small, gain experiences, don't shy away from entry level programs, maybe internships, because that is what actually builds you up. Then try to join open source um, programs, like um, um, open source um, projects, I mean, join them, you know, contribute in your own way. Then don't shy away from tech, um, tech events, right? I'm very sure there is, um, we developers, or is it DGG and Adway TT, Google developers, mm -hmm. all those tech, um, meetings just try and enjoy them because you're going to be learning from them some of them are a day programs and they are just talking and some of us get bored and we're like this thing get but i am very i can assure you that i'm one of those who have participated in these events and i've been a lot from them so i don't want i don't even trivialize them at all so join tech events then don't fear any challenges because we all know tech can be very challenging and there'll be various obstacles that you have to overcome to to, to down on your step to growth so be persistent and be open to failing okay so right. it's, it's up it's very fine to fail but just be sure that even if you fail is a step to your success then stay adaptable you know tech is dynamic there are so many things to learn there's so many things to do so you have to stay dynamic make sure that you're able to learn a lot of things and of course make sure you're streamlining like they mentioned right so i'm trying not to take too much time so mistakes to avoid please do not compare yourself with anybody there's many people out there that they are getting so many jobs and you know they are earning millions and you're a startup you're just taking a um a course in team plus five weeks course don't expect to you know just get a job like that that will pay you 250k per month you might get it right so things happen but if you do not get it if your friends get it do not compare yourself with them what you have to take your time to you know to understand is the fact that what is important is what you're solving the problem you're solving in your space so just make sure you're learning and then you're good to go thank you so much all right thank you so much and now on my part i'm just going to say save the energy that you used to complain used to cry and used to be depressed and just channel it to the to what you're doing be design development engineering just channel the energy there and you know everything everything is time bound you get so don't of course don't um compare yourself like you can co make comparisons but a healthy one but you know don't be too hard on yourself and work with a time frame that works well for you and um i don't know if anyone in the audience has any question for any of our panelists Um, do you have anybody that has a question? One, you're going to take one or two questions. Um, okay, since nobody's signifying, all right, we've come to the end of this panel session and thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ayeni. Thank you, Adidoni, and thank you, Anthony. We've really, you know, you fed on your, yeah, you. on your level of experience. This, yeah, thank you thank very much. You. We are humbled. Thank you so much. And we look to connecting to great minds like you much more in, and learning more from you. And we wish you the best in your handy voice. And we will see you at the very, very, very top. Thank you so Charlie, much. Thank yeah, you, you very too. much for having you me. Too. Thank you very much.
want to We want to appreciate all our panelists, thank them for the wonderful session. It has been very blessed. I believe all our graduates across all centers have been blessed. So by the grace of God, briefly, we, are, we have the privilege and the honor to have as our keynote speaker today for the graduates, a, a person of Inyi Aboyeji. We thank God that he will be coming on to So, but give, um, we'd like to invite Inyaboyeji. Inyaboyeji is currently the CEO of Fusho Africa, Funds for Africa Future. Prior to joining the fund, he was the co-founding -fund, was the founding CEO of Flutterwave and was the co-founder of Andela. And by the grace of God, this afternoon, God through him will be enriching our life, will be blessing us. For now, you can start a you can start make it have a startup, start build a product from startup and build it until it get to it becomes a global brand. So let's pay attention and let's take as much as we will get. Let's learn from him. In you are welcome. Okay. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, fantastic. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, first of all, thank you. I want to thank God for today. It's an amazing day that we are graduating our colleagues um, into the place of work. Um, and uh, I really, I really want to thank God that after I'm sure a lot of work and preparation has gone into this, that we are here to see this day. Um, in, um, very briefly, I, um, I just want to say maybe a few words of encouragement for those that are graduating. Um, however, before I do that, I, I, I want to apologize. I couldn't be with you in person. Um, unfortunately, I, I, I had to be here in Boko for our, our own graduation. We are having our own graduation starting today through till Sunday. So please you will forgive us um forgive me that i couldn't i couldn't be in two places at the same time uh until god gives us that ability we will, we will have to manage <laughs> um in the meantime I, I want to share a few a few thoughts a few words of encouragement um to those that are graduating and um really where i want us to think about it from is really with understanding the works um, that we have now been empowered to do uh, by virtue of these skills that we have picked up, we have learned. Um, you know, many of us may not fully understand what we are being brought into by virtue of being given these very, very powerful skills. And I'm sure you have heard the trope, as we always call it, or the you know, I'm sure you've heard it several times being said, you know, that the world is changing, that technology is now the dominant way um, that the world is going to be run, that, um, you know, um, people are, are now moving, especially post-COVID, from a remote, um, from a physical world to to digital. Um, I'm sure now 
we all know that everybody, even down to sometimes the woman that sells body around the streets is now using digital payments and trying to use digital tools. So the world is very, very different and it will continue to move in this direction by all indications. And that's what makes the um, skills that we have extremely powerful, whether it's as a software engineer or product person or, or cybersecurity or, or any of the other areas that I'm sure Kim Plus is training you in. And as you take this power to wherever you are going, um, I want you to consider what you want to do or what you want God to do through you with these skills. Um, you know, one of the mistakes I've seen a lot of young people make is that they immediately think that these skills are the sort of skill that will turn one to a billionaire overnight. And that's how people fall into wrong company, wrong advice. Some people even fall into victim to short-term planning or short-term decision-making that makes them redundant in very short period. I'm sure all of us can see that the world is um, a very different place and that there's a lot that is going on um, and that there is a, a number of important um, things that um, we, we, we need to be able to do um, for our country. And I want to challenge all of us that rather than thinking about how you can jackpa with the skills that you have now learned, that we take more time to even start to hone our skill by understanding the different applications of these skills that can be done within our environment. Sometimes it's not until we get, you know, technology um, to to meet us, um, to, you know, we are building some sophisticated technology that the skills that we are using are useful. Um, sometimes even as simple as in our churches, they have websites, can we help them? You know, from our former schools, do they have a website? Can they even start collecting small, small donations from their alumni? who are spread out all over the world. Let's own our skills by using this skill, own our skills by, by using these gifts that God is giving us to be able to improve the lives of those around us so that they will be able to relate more with the technology. And in the process of serving others, we will also find our own lifting. What I don't, what I hope that we will not do is wait until we get a big job. You understand? And um, it will be, you know, it, you know, it will, it, it, it will, it, you know, we don't, we don't want us to be in a position where we think, look, until we are working for a foreign organization, uh, that's when uh, we are, we are able to actually employ or deploy these skills. And I, I, I see now that our honorable commissioner, I would like to recognize uh, the presence of our honorable commissioner um, on this call. I'm very honored, sir, that you have decided to join us. Um, thank you very much, and may God continue to give you wisdom as you proceed um, to, to continue to do his work in government. So as I was saying, um, I really think that this is something that we should give some thought, and it will be, it, I think it will be a very good um, use of our skills and our talent. I think the second um, um, injunction I, I want to give to you especially those of you who are graduating, um, is to consider um, asking God and, you know, ask, looking around and trying to understand, you know, what it is, what is it that I want to pattern or specialize or pattern my life in. Uh, the skills that you have acquired today is just a beginning for you. It's nowhere near an end. You still have a very long path to go. So I want you to think carefully about what is it, where do I want to specialize? Where do I want to spend more of my time? What piques my interest? And what can I be number one in? We'll still get to that part. So it's really, really important that you ask yourself, what would I want to specialize in? I notice there are a lot of people 
they wait and they try and see what is raining. So today, AI is raining. I'm an AI engineer or prompt engineer. I don't know what they call it now. Um, oh, tomorrow, blockchain is raining. I'm a blockchain engineer. Oh, next tomorrow, this one is raining. I'm a this engineer. It's important for us to really settle down and really ask ourselves, what do we have a passion for in this space so that we can continue to drive our learning along those lines? It's very, very, very important. And then finally, um, and I can, I will, I will also uh, allow, because I have till one o'clock, then I have to go back to inspect projects for our own graduation tomorrow. Um, for for um, our, I, I think it's also really, really important that we make up our minds to be the best at everything that we are doing. One of the things that has really hurt us in this business um, is that um, a lot of people, you know, instead of taking the time to settle down and focus, they are looking for money. So they will go and take on five, ten jobs and do all of them very poorly, even though they have the capacity to do more. I'm hoping that that's not the kind of graduates that we have at Kim Plus and that we will have young people who will be dedicated in their work. You know, the Bible says, see it a man diligent in his work. He will stand before things. It's really important for us to understand that as we are going on the global stage, it's not just a local affair. You have an opportunity to even form a kitty, distinguish yourself on the global stage. And I pray that God will give you the grace to do so in Jesus' name. But the only way you will be able to do that is if you are focused and diligent. If you don't just make this a matter for your stomach, if you make this something that you want to be the number one in all over the world, thanks to the internet, there is no limitation anymore. There is no, you need to move to Lagos. There is no, you need to move to Abuja from AKT. You can make such an incredible impact that will transform your community, transform your society. And I know that this government is very serious about providing the enabling environment for you to do this. You see, for many of us, our journey started 10 years ago in Yaba. At that time, Yaba was not where people that wanted to build technology startups will go. They would rather be in Victoria Island, you know, and Lekki maybe. Eh? But now, all because of, of course, God's grace upon the people that did that work, but more importantly, because of the ambition, so even with the meager resources we have, distinguish ourselves, you understand? We're able to turn Yaba into a place that any technology leader what is salt coming to visit will stop by there before even finding their way to uh, uh Aso rock <laughs> so when mark zuckerberg was coming to nigeria he first went to yaba before going to Aso rock eh? that's the kind of place that a kitty can become if you determine in your heart that you are going to make sure that you are the best at what you do but if you decide that it's just about money then you will not have that kind of good reason. And I'm trusting God for you that you people will distinguish it, the fountain of knowledge as a place where technologists can come from. And at the end of the day, like I said uh, at the beginning of my speech, it's all about solving a problem. How can you solve a problem in your community? How can you serve with the skills that you have it's not for money, eh? it's not for showing off, it's not for jackpot, it's so you can serve. And if you dedicate your mind to serving with the skills that you have, you will be shocked at the heights to which God will take you. So with these few words of advice of mine, you know, that you use your skills for service, that you take your skills and you look for the highest expression of them, and that you try to be the best at the skills that you have. And I wish 
you the very best for those of you that are graduating and perhaps for those of you that are still within the program. I'm trusting God that you will come out um, accomplished and successful. God bless you and God bless the Pitti State. Thank you very much. Hello. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. We are, we are grateful for the time. We know he is very busy, but out of his love for the youths and out of his love and motivation to see that everybody is, to, his motivation towards this sheer prosperity and everybody prosper. You know, that's how he has been doing and that's why he needs to squeeze out time to still speak to us. Uh, we are very grateful, very, very grateful. So uh, what we still wait on the call, the commissioner would like to talk with us to also uh, appreciate the guardian. He has been the one sponsoring this program and God has really been using him. Wait. So I'll wait for my leader. Don't, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> you, buddy, sir. you are welcome. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Leko. And uh, he is my brother from a very long time. Um, so he doesn't have a choice in this matter. Um, we'll continue to bring him to speak and inspire, uh, you know, graduates of this program. Um, and for you guys, I mean, I know you've, he has introduced himself and said a lot about who he is, uh, but the reason I was very happy for him to join us today uh, uh, is because the work that he did starting from BookNet O to Fora, uh, ultimately landing in Andela, uh, is very important for the Nigerian tech ecosystem. Um, and what we're trying to do here is an extension of, of, that, of that work. Um, it's to ensure that anywhere you are across the country, especially for those of you in Ekiti, that the opportunities will not pass you by. Uh, and so while we've done this program, is really to ensure that if you have the talent, if you have the desire, you know, if you have the ability, the passion, you can succeed from Ado uh, You don't have to be anywhere in the world other than where you currently are. So, Inye, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate, you know, the time you've given uh, to join to join them today. Um, but again, I know I know what your own goals and aspirations uh where when you move when you move back home from canada uh and our role as government is to support uh these kinds of aspirations Lekon, i always say you know he could have when he joined you guys he could have stayed back in lagos you know many of the andela uh alums have gone on to do a number of interesting things you know but i am very very appreciative and i respect a lot his decision to come back home uh, to come and do this where it matters most, you know, to put everything he's learned into setting up King Plus and to now start to help, you know, to groom the next generation of, of, of talent. And my own role here is the simplest. You know, there's no, I know nothing about technology, you know, but when I see really smart people who know what's, what they're doing, my job is just to support them. And I'm happy that I'm commissioner for innovation, technology, and digital economies here, because also what Sean Fakwade is doing uh, is going to be significant in helping us all achieve our collective aspirations. We'll be bringing you back when we want to break ground on our knowledge zone. Physically, I'll be physically, there. Physically, physically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because again, for many of the people here, you know, who, have, who are in this class, just hold the line because, you know, our knowledge zone is going to transform the tech ecosystem in, in Ikiti. And in fact, across the Southwest, we've just, uh, we're, we're about to take the, doc, the loan application to the African Development Bank Board. It's going to be considered in September, you know, an $80 million loan to build out what is Nigeria's first physical service and technology-based um, special economic zone. So it's exciting times for us in Ikiti. You know, uh, the future couldn't be any brighter. And we should all be very, feel very privileged and blessed uh, to be part of this future. So, so thanks, me. Thank you very much for joining us. I thought it was important for me to just join briefly to say thank, thank you, you. My, my, my friend and brother. Always appreciative you. of your support all the time. 
And to my colleague, the Honorable Commissioner uh, Sean Fakwadi, thank you for, for joining us and thank you for being part of this. You know, this is something that we hope what I've done here for me is just a proof of concept. Um, it's now important for, you know, other parties to then say, how do we do this at a much bigger scale? But those who say the talent does not exist, at least you can see, you know, if we provide the opportunity, the talent exists. So thank you very much. Uh, I thank need to go back uh, to work. work. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. No problem, sir. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So we still want to, we'd like to invite our Honorable Commissioner for Innovation, Science, and Digital Economy, Honorable Luashi Onfakuade, to also bring his goodwill message to the graduates, a word of inspiration. We are very so much passionate about his motivation and his commitment to youth development. You are welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Um, let me first start by thanking uh, Honorable Commissioner for Finance. Um, I mean, much has been said for a lot who know you, but for those on this call who don't know uh, who are Kimi Bode is beyond being a Commissioner you, for Finance. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, can we can hear you. Hear you. Can yes, um, what uh, Honorable Akimi Body has done, uh, both in terms of catalyzing interest and even bringing uh, the boots to the floor, is enabling the belief that it is possible to live anywhere and work anywhere with the right skills that you have uh, to transform your lives and change your destiny. And uh, one cannot but just appreciate his steadfastness and commitment to ensuring that uh, the proof of concept on ideating skills innovation programs uh, comes to life and fruition. So I want to say a big thank you to Honorable Oye uh, Thank you so much for all you've done, all you're doing, and all you still do for the ecosystem. Of course, uh, to my brother, I mean, the journey has been quite a while i remember those days conversing and conversing with uh ubeck uh with uh, the education commission in abuja regarding your different startups when you just came back from toronto and i can just be proud i mean look uh, at a much more auspicious event a bigger event when you're all physically present i'll tell you guys some stories about these young men a white tenacity commitment steadfastness being visionary is important. Skills is good. What you're learning now is important, but it's not enough. Uh, you have to have grit. You have to have that stay power that uh, it is possible to cause an upset in a system that is conventional. Because whatever you may have read about in uh, Aboyeji uh, is not a conventional man. He doesn't think the conventional way and he dares to believe that things are possible if you put your heart and mind to it. Um, so in you thank you for the things you're doing for the ecosystem and of course the things that you will still do we have an outstanding talk that I'm sure at some point we'll get to but there's a lot to do for the ecosystem in Ekiti state and of course Africa uh, and beyond and uh, to our very dear beautiful skillful talents that are graduating today look I will tell you one thing you have no limits that's what I will tell you you have absolutely no limits. Um, the first step to redefining and changing your life is understanding where you are and where you want to be. And for some of you, like Inya said, you have rightfully defined the starting point for yourselves in creatives, in creative tech, in software engineering, in cloud computing system, data analytics, whatever it is you have decided to do. Uh, I'm sure that the steps from here would be higher and higher because no one can shut down someone who has a skill especially in this age and time um you don't even need to go to a school in terms of having a university degree but when you have the skills that the world needs the future of work skill uh you are practically unstoppable and what i would just say in addition to all that has been said ahead of time is to stay the line and be steadfast there are opportunities in the ecosystem that are coming that will put your skills to work and will put your expertise to play.
And one of them is the knowledge zone, which our honorable boy or your body has discussed uh, very briefly with you guys. Uh, we foresee a future where Ekiti becomes the talent capital for Nigeria and Africa, a knowledge corridor uh, of sorts. You think about the Kendall Square in Boston, you're thinking about the biomedical clusters in California. These are the same strategic pathways that we're looking at to Ekiti State becomes an innovation epicenter for Nigeria. And it is not just uh, an eye for looting idea, it has been thought through, it has been processed, it has gone through a series of very, uh, very important conversations with development part partners and multinationals. And what we know is that if we have a solid, highly skilled talent development pipeline program, um, we will attract investments, we will attract the right companies, we will attract the right uh, research and development to trigger an economy that is knowledge-driven and knowledge-based. Um, at your convenience, you can study all of the economies across the world. Without skills, you can really, really do nothing. Without consistently bringing up people like you are graduating today, uh, you would still continue to be a, a state that is struggling. So I want to salute your courage, your resilience, your steadfastness throughout your course with Kim Plus. Um, but I want to tell you that this is just your starting point. There is hope and there is possibility ahead of you. And finally, for me, I want for coming back home, like uh, Honorable Yobode would say, um, it takes a lot of <laughs> commitment and zeal to do the kind of thing that you've done in the past couple of years. And I'm hoping that with the grace of God and the support of the leadership in this state, that we will be able to support people, uh, companies like yours in transforming our landscape to becoming the epicenter for talent uh, skills development in Nigeria. And of course, as a model for West Africa. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, you'll be hearing from me soon, by the grace of God, regarding the things that we are planning for the innovation ecosystem. And I'm certain that uh, this is just the beginning for you. Well done. Thanks so much, sir. We are very grateful for the time and for the for sparing the time to talk with us. Really appreciate it. We know it is out of your passion and commitment to youth development and share prosperity and this vision of share prosperity. And we are trusting God that our graduates who are graduating today, they are going to maximize their skill and use it for society development. And we are trusting God that even all we have in pipeline for the Kit Knowledge June will materialize. We all witness it and we all become a part of it. We all take we all benefited from it. I want to say thank you very much to the Honorable Commissioner Akitudio Yebode and our Honorable Commissioner Shion Fakuade and our keynote speaker in Yolu Aboyeji and all our panelists we want to say thank you. And the graduate today also we want to say thank you for the time you have uh, commit for the commitment you have put into this. So our graduate, as you step out in, into the world, and with new fun digital skills. Remember that this is just the beginning. The knowledge you've gained and the experiences you've shared will undoubtedly serve as the foundation for your future endeavors. Whatever you choose to innovate in the tech industry, apply your skills to other sectors, even pave your own paths. Your capabilities are boundless. If there's no space, as the saying goes, if there's no space, make your own space. In the words of a wise person, with great power comes great responsibility. As digitally empowered individuals, you have the power to shape our future, to create solutions to global challenges, and to uplift communities. Let your actions be guided by integrity, empathy, and a commitment to making the world a better place through your digital prowess, a commitment to make a kitty state a better place. As we celebrate your achievement today, remember that this is not a conclusion, but a commencement. The connections you've made and growth you have experienced carry forward the spirit of learning, adaptability, and innovation that you have cultivated during this training. Congratulations once again to our graduates and a heads and a heartfelt thank you to our commissioners, our royal fathers, 
and chairman and our keynote speaker Nyamboyeji for gracing us with your presence. Together, let us continue to embrace the digital age with enthusiasm, determination, and the shared visions of progress and prosperity. Once again, thank you very much. We are grateful. Good afternoon, everyone, and all the Thank you very much. My name is Victoria Egonoti, and I'm one of the beneficiaries of the King Plus Technology Internship um, at Ecole. And I want to use this opportunity to say thank you very much um, to the Commissioner of Finance, Mr. King Tudori Body. Thank you very much for sponsoring this program. Um, I'm very sure, as I've been benefited from it as a UX uh, intern, um, there are a whole lot of other people too that were um, interning in this program and they've been able to benefit one way or the other. And we're not just going to stop here. We're going to continue to learn and do so many other things with it. Just like you said, there were some people that are now Andela alumnus and they're doing well in their space. And even the people that talked to us in the panel session, they enlightened us and to know that they are from Kim Plus, they graduated from Kim Plus, is a great plus because it's going to inspire others like us to, to continue in our faith. So I want to say thank you to everybody that made this program a success, to the organizers, um, to the sponsors, to the people that gave us the platform, um, the pleasure we were using for the program throughout the six months internship. I want to say thank you and God bless you. I will promise not to let you down. We're going to continue um, learning in different ways and making sure uh, we all make everybody proud. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining us. So we are about to go offline now and at our different centers, we're going to do project showcasing. So the students will showcase the projects they did after their period of learning, what they were able to come up with. Thank you so much once again, we appreciate you.